guys. So today I'm going to do the field test for this Bockingford watercolor paper. This is, um, so what turned me on to this uh, English paper is that Windsor Newton has been working to acquire it. And um, everyone who had talked about it, talked about it so glowingly that I thought it was worth uh, checking out. So it is gummed on one side with the other three sides being open. And I don't always have the best experience with that, even though this is 140 pound paper. So even though it's gonna affect the end result negatively, uh, because it is an all, oh, you know, actually, maybe I should just remove it from the pad. and try to affix it to my desk. Let's see if we don't get better results with that. And this video is for the most part going to be a time lapse. This is not a watercolor tutorial. If you guys do have any questions, uh, please ask me in the comments below. I went ahead and I used a graphite transfer to transfer over the, this image from a piece of sketchbook paper. And you can find tutorials here on this channel for that as well. And I will be taking notes as I work on this. So uh, if you are interested in how this paper handles over time and as I add water, you can check out natosuit.blogspot.com for the full review. So I'll see you guys. Ooh. At the end of this tutorial, well, at the end of this time lapse, when everything is painted.
right, guys. So my thoughts on this Bockingford paper. I found it unusual in terms of um, higher quality papers that I've used. Now the package says it's mold made, acid free, but I'm not actually seeing what the paper content is. It claims to use pure materials and is held to archival standards. Um, and that they use woolen felts to give it the distinctive texture. But I'm still not seeing what it's made of. Now I have to probably do some research to find out about it, but I'll pull out for a minute. Windsor Newton does make their own watercolor paper, which I enjoy quite a bit more than I enjoyed painting on the Bockingford paper. Um, I found the Bockingford paper takes sediment, col sedimentary colors, colors that uh, granulate, uh, just kind of unusually, so you get this like cockled texture to it. It's 140 pounds, and midway through, I did remove it from the table in order to to do a, a paint do to paint all the way to the edge um but you know the most definitive thing that i realized when painting on this is that i'm going to need to do something that is more my own style of painting to really decide if this paper is right for me or not i was doing a takashi uh, makoto style test based on one of my recent acquisitions or inspired by one of my recent acquisitions using um, my character drawn in his style for this um, particular field test. But I think I'm going to have to do something a little more to my own normal style to see just how well this paper handles. I did have some problems with blending. I did find the dry times were kind of long for um, compared to what I'm used to. Um, and I am comparing it, I was assuming it was a cotton-based paper like Fluid 100 or Arches or Moulin de Roy or uh, Windsor Newton's watercolor paper. So um, in that regard, usually those will absorb the water quickly but stay damp and you have a long period where you can do blending techniques. I found this paper unusual in that regard. So I'm gonna have to experiment with it further. But this was my first field test. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me work. I hope you guys learned something. I will see you around. Bye, guys.